In this lesson, we'll assign material properties to several elements throughout the scene. Okay, so now that we've selected and captured a scene we'd like to develop, and we've also set the uh, parameters for our environment, which are sun, location, and time of year, and also time, um, we're now at a point now where we can start fine-tuning the scene a little bit. Um, what we'll start out doing first is we'll apply some material properties to our floor and our wall here. And we'll also make some adjustments to the vegetation that's outside. Um, again, trying to bring that outside in for this particular scene. So let's start out with the floor. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my first, second floor plan here. And all we're really going to do in this case um, is we're going to develop the floor within the scene that's within the boundaries of our scene and by doing this we're not modeling or making adjustments to the entire model we're setting the scene to where Revit can concentrate its rendering efforts um, into just that particular scene and we're reducing the amount of time it takes to get something rendered so to do that I'm simply gonna highlight this floor and we're just gonna split the face and we're gonna assign a material to this floor so I'm gonna go with my split face tool here under my geometry tab and I'm just going to use um, a rectangle tool to get this accomplished. Again, we're just going to focus on developing the floor that's within our scene. We're not too concerned with everything that's going on throughout the rest of the model. So at this point, I'm just going to pick a starting point here, this corner. And I'm going to click and drag and bring the opposite side of this corner to this wall here. So now um, we know by the position of our camera here, I'm going to have plenty of opportunity to express what's going on with my floors here in any area in the view here. So now I can hit my green check mark and when I highlight that floor you can see that floor is now split. So we essentially have two different surfaces. Uh, one that we just created here for our scene and one that's just for the generic floor. So now we could just go and apply some material to the floor or the face that we just split. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll go to this paint tab here, the paint button and I want to assign our birch wood floor pattern to this floor. It's a nice light wood. Um, it's not as dark as cherry or oak, but it's going to be a nice light color, but it's still that wood floor that I'm looking for. So I'm going to select that material. And once I do that, I'm simply going to click on the face that we just split and just created. So now I can click done in this window and you could tell now by how this is represented graphically, we have a new material that's totally different than what's going on throughout the rest of this model. So I want to develop this just a little bit further. I want to make sure that the appearance of this floor is, is going to be consistent with what I want it to look like. Um, so really quickly, we'll go to Manage here. And let's manage some of our materials. And that birch material we just selected should be located within our window here. And it is. It's right there. Perfect. So now really all I want to do is make a quick adjustment. I just want to adjust its surface pattern. So as I'm working throughout here, I my floor was representative of what a real wood floor would look like. I, it's all about being consistent and as realistic as possible. So I'm going to add a pattern to this and I want it to look like the wood floor style pattern and it's not going to be under my drafting pattern type. It's probably going to be here underneath the model. So I'm going to make that model selection and that's exactly what I want here. The wood board wide pattern. So I'm going to make that selection, click OK and I'll click apply and OK and you can see that's automatically updated in this view. Now the view that we're looking at is not necessarily going to be our rendered view but I'm all about being as consistent and accurate as possible so I know that this is just our consistent color view but the representation is consistent with what the wood floor looks like. So now let's jump our attention to the wall. So we'll jump back to our 3D view real quick and I really want to make this wall pop a lot in this scene so right now how it's represented is how you normally would represent a concrete block wall is just gray with the concrete block pattern so I'm gonna select that right click and I'm gonna select all instances uh, this way I'm selecting the all the concrete block walls uh, in this case it's gonna be our elevator shaft so I'm gonna select all instances in my entire project and we're going to go to edit type and we're going to structure and I'm going to concrete on the layers here, material layers. I'm going to click on that. And what we want to do is we want to add just a little tint to the appearance of that block wall. So we could do it here in the graphics. I'm going to do it both, one, in the graphics area, and two, in the appearance. That way, by doing it in the graphics, it will appear while I'm working in my consistent colors view. 
And once I do it by making that adjustment in appearance, it'll appear in my rendered view. And I already have a really good idea of the color I want to use, and I'm just going to make sure I'm consistent with the color I choose, making sure it's the same color in my graphics tab as I have in my appearance. So I'm simply going to click on that color here, and we're going to go with this orange color. I'll click OK, apply OK. And we'll go back in here one more time. And I want to do the same thing to the appearance. That way my rendered view will be consistent with what we have going on in our consistent color view. And to do that, we're not going to make any adjustments here to the masonry or the image, but we are going to add a slight tint to this material. So I'm going to click on tint. I'm going to select my orange color here. Click OK, apply. And you can see here in our graphic above, this lets us know that we are applying something to a wall pattern, and it actually shows us what it's going to look like in this window here. Pretty helpful. So I'll click OK in this window, OK in this window. Apply one more time and OK. And now when I click anywhere, you should see, since we're in the consistent color view here, my orange is represented nicely. And also, when we later do a render view, that orange should show up real nicely, and we could begin to tweak some of the elements we place throughout our scene to make this look more realistic. And finally, one more thing I'd like to do um, is to make some adjustments to the exterior vegetation that we placed earlier when we were laying out the scene. So I'm just going to jump to level one floor plan. And as I mentioned, I wanted part of the rendering, part of the scene, I wanted to capture what was going on outside as well, whether that's the, the warmth of the sun coming in to the scene or the vegetation that's outside throughout the site. So I'm going to adjust the height of these trees because right now we're doing our scene on the second floor and you get a small glimpse of a few of the leaves on this tropical tree and I really want this to really come into the scene so I'm going to increase that height so it's a lot more visible. So I'm going to click on that, right click, select all instances and entire property project. I'm going to edit type and we're going to change its height from 15 feet. We'll change that to 20 feet and that should give us plenty of visibility for those uh, for that vegetation on the outside. So I'll click OK and apply and we'll jump to our 3D view just to make sure it updated properly. Nice. So not only can you see the planting uh, stuff we have going on on the interior, but we also have the exterior shining into our spot here. So one last thing I'm going to do before we jump into uh, the next lesson is I want to name this view. Um, so I'm simply going to go to my 3D view. I'm going to right click this view. And now that we're this far ahead, um, I'm going to go ahead and assign a name to this. So we'll rename this view, and I'm just going to call this one Northeast Lobby or Northeast Looking Lobby. This way I'm organized, and if I do get to a point where I'm creating several different renders or I'm, my process uh, entails me doing some experimentation and I want to take a look at different renders, I'll know exactly what I'm looking at by having those titled correctly. So we're at a really good stopping point at this point, and in the next lesson we're going to start setting up the stage for, for lighting, and also we're going to play around with some of the render settings. So I'll see you in the next lesson.